Hey friends, and welcome to Beyond Damascus, the show where encounter meets mission. My name is Brad Pieron. I'll be the host for today's episode, and I'm joined in the illustrious Damascus studio with my two friends and brothers in Christ, Mr. Aaron Richards hey, Brad. and Dan Dimite. Hey, hey, hey. Guys, how are you feeling? It's a good day. It is a good Ooh, day. Yeah. I feel so good. good. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. If you've I ever been to I camp, you'll know that chant, but everyone so else good. won't have any idea what no, we're it's doing. No, it's a chant we do at camp. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah but that's all right. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling great, too. I'm uh, excited about today's episode. If you're joining us for the first time, this is the show where Encounter Meets Mission. We're a, a show that doesn't merely like talking about mission. We like being on mission, and we're actually on mission with you in a special way this season. And as we come to the end of this season, we just want to remind you that we have a generous benefactor who has agreed to give $10 for every new subscriber we have to Beyond Damascus this season. And that $10 will go to a young person so that they can experience Catholic Youth Summer Camp, which is our flagship program here at Damascus. So if you've encountered God through the ministry of Damascus in any way, or even through this podcast, hit that subscribe button because young people come and have their lives changed at Catholic Youth Summer Camp here at Damascus. And you can make that possible simply by hitting that button. And so we're really grateful for that. And we're grateful for you for Mm -hmm. considering that. And then I'm going to throw it right on over to Jack, who has our question of the week. Jack, Whoa. what question you got for us? Jack. The question of the week, Brad, is... Jack, you got a nice sweatshirt on. Thanks, Aaron. He is sporting yeah. a Bucky's sweatshirt. <laughs> if you've if, not been to Bucky's... If, I, mean, I met, for the first time ever, it was about two weeks ago, I met someone from the town, I think, Lake Jackson, Texas, Uh and it, man, this guy loved Bucky's. This is Bucky's started there, and Nick he would not stop talk about anything other than Bucky's. I was so amazed. I was like, I love this. That this this I had no idea I have about this, this enterprise. Jack, for you, Bucky's. You, you oh, can it was cut incredible. This for the radio. Yeah, I, I learned so much when I saw his shirt today. I was like, wow, I feel so connected. Jack, we feel so good and connected to your sweatshirt. So, do you guys want to hear the question? Or- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot why we were talking to you for a second. <laughs> okay, so the question of the week is: How would you walk with someone who identifies as LGBT? Oh man. Yeah. How would can you say it one more time? How would you walk with someone? How would you walk with someone who identifies as LGBT? As LGBT. How would you walk with someone who I mean, uh, let me kick it going off. first. Oh, oh Aaron. That's a uh, that one was close. That's a tough there question. Is. Just okay. to this dive is a into great right day. Away. Okay. Hey, Aaron, Aaron got one. Good job. I know. <laughs> Take a moment. This means this is gonna be a good Grateful answer. Listen up, friends. Okay, so I uh I, I really have compassion for the for the person who's who's asking this question and it brings to my mind uh sort of just a question on on the nature of friendship and how it is that we walk with any person right i think my, my first reaction here is that obviously a, a person who identifies as lgbt or identifies with any area of life that's different from yours or any area of um private or public sin that you know or suspect that they might be engaged in or influenced by, that our first reaction needs to be just that I'm still in relationship with a human being, right? Um, even the word identify is one that strikes me uh, that the truly the only proper identification that we have as Christians is as sons and daughters of God, right? Anything apart from that is, is a broken identity, and uh, the, the world has been very specific and articulate in trying to create uh, an environment where we actually um, associate with our core identity this uh, area of sinfulness or struggle, right? Um, so uh, how, do I, how do I walk with, how do I maintain friendship with a person who, is, uh, who identifies as LGBT? The suggestion that I'd like to give is that you need to understand your freedom to uh, to enforce to reinforce boundaries in relationships that allow you to still love without restriction in the areas where you have personal freedom. So what I mean by that is if there's something, whether it's sexuality or whether it's uh, a compromised friendship or whether it's a particular other, behavior or association in your life or in a person's life that causes you to be uncomfortable with them, um, you still, like, that's not an excuse to not be in friendship and to not be in relationship. You need to just love them in a way where you're not distracted by those things. 
So uh, the example that my mind goes to like is if I have a if I have a buddy who who identifies with this particular struggle in his life and I feel very uncomfortable with it and I don't have the ability to speak into it and it makes me awkward like I've got options I could separate myself from friendship with him or I could engage meaningfully in friendship activities that have nothing to do with talking about our sexuality mm-hmm. right and then actually building up and reinforcing the the integrity of that friendship I, I think that, that that's a that's a healing uh, it, it invites a healing process into the relationship as a whole. So I, I'm I'm thinking of like examples in my life. I find that when I'm in conversation with uh, with a friend, and it and conversation tends toward a topic where I don't feel complete freedom in my heart. When I start to speak, I end up putting my foot in my mouth. Versus if I were just to be honest and say like, hey, um, that topic kind of makes me uncomfortable. Can we talk about something else? Mm-hmm. Or can we, can we do something else together to, uh, like, to affirm and to reinforce friendship? And this is why, okay, one more, one more caveat here to completely switch, switch uh, directions. This is why I think engaging in times of worship together with other non-Catholic Christians is really good for us because it allows us to take our eye off the difference that we may or may not be comfortable talking about hmm. and focus on the thing that we agree with that actually builds us up as as friends. I love that. That's a great that's a great analogy. You don't have to have every conversation it doesn't have to be about Marian doctrine. It can actually be about the similarity that you have with a Protestant brother or sister. Namely that we and love then, Jesus. You know, yeah. like yeah, we can start there. And every I, I love that. Aaron, I think you do that really well. Like I I've seen mm-hmm. you just over the years you have uh you have sincere friendships with um, common hobbies that you have with people who um, they they may have a super solid relationship with the Lord, or they may have uh, kind of tapered off in their relationship with mm-hmm. the Lord. But your consistency of friendship hasn't changed with them, and so you you have remained just as uh, just as faithful and friendly and engaged in love with them. And uh, what I've noticed is their reaction, whether it, like, you know, even if they've left the church, yeah. their reaction is still comfort and friendship with you and yeah. uh, and you guys mm-hmm. engage and you, you're able to witness through your lifestyle you're able to witness in so many ways still because you have consistency in your lifestyle even through the ups and downs of theirs thanks yeah Dan. yeah I see that too um question for you I think so you were mentioning that um I think I'm paraphrasing but you were mentioning like if you were with a friend who is identifying in this way and topic a topic came up that you didn't feel freedom to speak into you would simply in humility suggest like hey this topic makes me how how do you (laughs) like at least do you have like a litmus test on like if you have the freedom to kind of go there in a conversation like how do you decide um is there like a way that you see the person or like um yeah yeah i guess just if there's a way by which you can yeah determine that i suppose i mean you got to let your conscience be your guide there sure uh, and maybe the, the words that I would look out for are like, I need to establish a good boundary and boundaries are not bad. I need to establish a good boundary in conversation and relationship in an area where I feel compromised mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I've, I've even experienced and this, I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, right? I've even experienced as I've grown older mm-hmm. that I have a different kind of freedom to be able to speak into the beauty of like younger women in my life. Sure. Yeah. Because there's, yeah. there's like, there's a freedom that's come from being from even just raising my own daughters into now young adulthood or uh, yeah. teenage years. Yeah. Right. Where, where I just, I'm seeing through a different lens and I'm, I'm finding like, Oh, like me saying this thing to you would have been awkward. Yeah. Five years ago, but it, it feels less awkward now. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because there's a, there's a boundary that, that needed to exist then for all the right reasons Mm -hmm. that needs to exist less now. Yeah. And you're able to see that. I think I've also heard you say before that, um, if there's, and again, I think I'm probably paraphrasing, but if there's any area where you're not able to see the person past their sin, or if, if there's an area where you can't see the person without seeing their sin, that's probably a good test of where, where not to go because it's like, actually, I'm yeah, not so if, treating you as a human anymore if I go. So if there's a, if there's a if there's a compromised component of of your own um conscience, mm-hmm, like you need to be mm-hmm. you need to be aware of that. And then yeah, anything that would that would cause you to see someone through a lens that doesn't that doesn't 
accentuate their dignity. Yeah, that's really you know, good. That, that I know I'm inclined toward judgment when mm-hmm. I think about this, or I know I start second guessing what I'm going to say or how I'm going to speak, or I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to bring this thing up. Like maybe that's a reason to. Yeah, you don't need to bring that up right now. Yeah, I like there's that there's a lot. freedom to exist in in the lane that you've established. Mm-hmm. An example of that is I had a few friends who uh, like this was earlier, like when I was younger, and I was very like very 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 bold bold yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah um political you're still pretty bold uh, yes but like <laughs> political differences would uh-huh. just like mm-hmm. erupt into anger right away and so it's just like all right we just need to stop talking about these political differences because yeah. they're not actually they're not helpful for us in this friendship and hmm. um whereas now those same people i can have those conversations because we've both grown in maturity yep. and we can engage in loving conversation and even loving disagreement and still Ha- maintain authentic relationality yeah. with one another. Yeah, that's funny too because I, I was uh, I was reflecting on uh, recently. I was listening to a podcast where they were describing some just like um, some ways that they had. Um, I'm trying to like use it without like specifically naming it, but there was there was a particular individual who was just mentioning ways that they had been in conversations that were a little more apologetic in nature, and they they just totally missed the person. They were just a hundred percent after truth. And I remember kind of reflecting after that, thinking to myself, like, just you're never going to be able to change someone's mind if you don't first change their heart. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just it's not going to happen. Like, you just it doesn't. I've been in arguments about sports. I've been in arguments about faith. I've been in arguments about politics. Like a lot, a lot of my life, especially before conversion, was just built on like let's get into arguments and see who. But never do you really walk away from that with yeah. the side who loses changing their mind, unless you've been in relationship where their hearts change and they're like, you know, I kind of see that differently now. You know, mm-hmm. and it, it's really funny how that works. I'm all about changing people's hearts yeah. when it comes to sports conversations. Yeah. No, yeah, like, yeah, oh, like, I, I, been... I'll be talking about like the Browns all the time and people are like sorry. crying. Yeah. Like, I never repent. I'll become yeah. a Bengals fan. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I obviously know that you have, you're right hearted if you like the Buckeyes and yeah. the Bengals, okay. but um, I'm going to throw these in. Um, right. Yeah, I, yeah, I did mention sports debate. So <laughs> um, if you have a, a poor heart for sports, just let me know. Yeah, um, yeah. we'll pray over you. Yeah, what was I going to say? I put two cents in because, oh yeah, um, I want to emphasize well, first, I I love what you said, Aaron. Whoever's asking this, like, thanks for thanks for going there and asking a question that really matters. I think that I want to start my answer with something that's a, a little more able to be abstracted, but then kind of bring it into the exact circumstance of someone that's um, identifying as LGBT. Um, so first, I I think there's a real power in regularity, and I, I've mentioned that on the podcast before, but I think it, it bears repeating here and. Um, part of my like life was just uh, growing up in a small town. And when you go to the same places over and over again, you just recognize that people begin to know you. And uh, when you see people over and over again, they start knowing you and you start knowing them. And so relationship really is about regularity. And if there there's a relationship that you cherish so much that you want to see some change in for the better, um, the first place to start is regularity because you're never going to fully know who that person is unless you're regularly with them. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know who they are, how do you find any avenue to speak into what you think they are if you don't have the regularity to suppose that you actually know a, a more full picture than just that mm-hmm. one little angle that you're going at? So I want to speak into the, into the power of regularity. So if if there's a person in your life that you are walking with, meet with them regularly. Meet meet like all the time, once a week, once every couple of weeks. It depends on what state of life you're in. But as as you're meeting with that person regularly, what you're going to find is you're going to have more conversations. And again, I love what Aaron was saying. You want to put boundaries where you're uncomfortable. But if this is a relationship where you're able to really go into these like different things, like, like yeah, like what do you think about how the country is going and the stuff like that. Like things naturally come about when you're regularly with people. Then what I would say though, is to get into the LGBT part. If it's someone who identifies in that way, as you're spending more and more time with them and having more and more conversations with them, find the aspects of their identity that do relate to their sonship or daughterhood in the Lord and start celebrating those things. Because what happens in the world, whether it's LGBT or something else, is we begin identifying with something that's just easy for us to follow. It's like, oh, I can I can put myself there and then, and then I understand myself a little more. You're never going to give up on whatever you've identified that thing as unless you have something that's 
laudable or celebratory in a different arena of your identity. And so you as the friend might actually be called to be the person that celebrates an identity that they never even knew they had. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing that, you're starting to build up the person as they truly are, even past their desires, like at, at the most foundational level, like you are an intentional person, like the way that you see people, the way that you love people, the way that you go out of your way to serve people is, is so admirable. And I, I like, has that always been the case for you? You can even like, go, you can even ask them to teach you. You can put yourself into a place as student where it's like, I see this in you. I'd love to learn from you. So I think when, when you're uh, meeting regularly with someone, it gives you an opportunity to have conversations with them that you would not be able to have otherwise. And when you're in those conversations, pay attention to the incredibly positive aspects of this amazing person that's across from you. Mm. Start celebrating those things. And as that identity is built up, they're going to naturally feel that identity building up and then identifying conversations are going to be more frequent. And that's when you can start saying like, hey, I I'm, not, I'm not sure where you're at with that, but I love that you asked me. I've just found that if I I identify in anything that's not the Lord, I find myself sideways. And when I started identifying in that way and letting all the things I did flow from that, it changed my life, right? Because that's the moment where testimony is then witness and witness is unto evangelization. So that's, that's what I would say is regularity equals more conversations. I'm glad this show's recorded. That was a really more good. More conversations. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good line. There it is. So I, uh, Brad is the best with the one-liners. That's that's why that's why we keep him around. <laughs> that's why they keep me around. I think, I think he prepares in I, 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 I think it's important to acknowledge too, just the the, the current political environment has made I like convert like that's all we see. Like it's it's yeah. like all we when like when we first meet someone who um it, it identifies with being LGBT, sometimes oh that's like that we can't think about anything else, right? And it's like and when you celebrate and you see their good attributes and the virtues that they have and the way they are like Jesus. I like we have a uh, a neighbor in our neighborhood. That's you know. That's, yeah, that's, that's where our neighbors well, no, are. Isn't that funny? Sometimes like we're like to love your neighbor. It's like yeah. anyone. It's like or maybe the yeah, person yeah. in your neighborhood. But um, and and I'll tell you what. Like he is the like he he's in a same sex marriage and and yet in in our like when I first met him like I, that became it was like that's like all I could like oh my gosh he's in a and, but then huh. when you get to like he is the most generous authentic loving human being in our neighborhood. He knows every neighbor by name. He knows their kids' names. He knows like. Like what's going on in their life? He knows how. Like he is just a, he is living like uh, with an authentic, loving heart in a way that my wife and I are often like. Wow, he is he is like trumping us and his ability to love thy neighbor and. And, and and so once we start celebrating those qualities right. and really just honoring, my wife is so great. She's always like, "You're you're like the life of our neighborhood." Thank you so much for being so kind and generous. And as we've celebrated, our friendship has grown. And hmm. and initially, he knew, you know, I worked at a Catholic camp, and he was a fundraiser. And like, but it, it, those conversations were hard to have, mm -hmm. if you will. But mm -hmm. like now, it's actually become very easy to have faith based conversations. And yeah. uh, and the the conversation over the years has developed. But I think it's because he sees us as humans and he celebrates our good qualities and we're not just a church that says no and and we're able to see him and not just his life circumstances and and and, and we're not just saying no. And yeah. I, I think yeah, there's something good. about see the human first, mm -hmm. love the human, celebrate the human, and then you're going to grow in relationship, as you said, where you have relational authority now to have conversations about a diverse set of topics. Yeah, I found in my life that like it, it really is celebration that unlocks the opportunity to challenge. And I use challenge loosely there. I don't mean to come at like, I don't mean challenge and like, I'm going to give you a five point sermon, but like celebration, celebrating the parts of you that are solid allows trust to be built over time to where I say, Hey, I believe everything I said. And this thing kind of, it, it do, doesn't lead as well unto those amazing qualities. And yep. like, the, but you're, if you lead there ever, I mean, you mentioned the, the climate, it's like the moment that you create politics into red team, blue team, it's, it's, it's over. Yeah. Like you can't, th there's no discussion because the goal is for the red team to beat the blue team and the blue team to beat the red team. And, and all of a sudden you just can't even, you can't navigate. Dan, toss those two cents. All right. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that was
was actually amazing. <laughs> that was yes. awesome. Okay. okay. That this, was a, and he flipped one. We need to so try this your, is for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good episode. For those listening, we flip and throw coins into a jar because these are our two cents. So I just, it's supposed to be I fun. just free throwed. Is it free throwed? Yeah, yeah, I is think that's the right a, way that's to a, say a, it? That's a verb. Uh, both free, at the same time. Okay. Through. It was helpful. They were a little sticky. Maybe they stuck together. Okay. Maybe. How do... You walk with someone who identifies uh, with the LGBT movement or um, I think the walk with this is coming from someone who disciples, right? Mm -hmm. A a normal person would simply say, hey, how do I be friends with someone who identifies? Um, And so I think this person is trying to disciple someone, right? If I'm walking with them, I'm trying to disciple them. And I think the first and most important thing is that discipleship is not merely about behavioral modification, that Jesus, uh, discipleship is all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And uh, and what Jesus's hope and hunger and desire for us is to have a relationship with him. He wants us to know him, to love him, and to be in communion with him. And, and so what does Jesus do? He he looks at people. I mean, he eats with sinners. He dines with them. He enters their homes. And other people would never have done that, right? And I think we're kind of in a place where the— um, they're like we're struggling with this question, and not it's if you're asking this question, how do I walk with someone in this situation? It's 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 not just I don't want to say I have the perfect answer. To this none of us have the perfect answer. The church is still struggling with this answer, right? Like mm-hmm. we we the pastoral um, solution to the complicated situations that the modern society faces is not clear and simple, and so. W- Look, we're all doing our best, I would say, and, and our, we have to be motivated by love. But Jesus, motivated by love, he he eats with the sinner, and he um, and he even like he invites the 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 tax collector, he invites the prostitute, he invites the sinner to follow him before their behavioral modification is solidified, right? Like, and I think we often assume that the people in scripture, um, because Jesus said, go and sin no more, went and sinned no more. But that, is that really true? Like when you came to follow Jesus, did you sin no more? And, mm-hmm. and even if you came to follow Jesus and you were struggling with mortal sin, did you go and sin no more? More Like the, the serious sin even takes time to weed out of our life. And you may yeah. even say serious sin takes a longer time to weed out of our life. And Jesus knows that. And so as these men, and we see this from Peter, who is, um, you know, uh, first Pope, pretty important follower of Jesus. He commits a major sin uh, by abandoning Jesus when he's arrested. Yeah. And then (laughs) betraying him and I mean, denying him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and so there's, we see sinful tendencies in people's lives even after Jesus invites him to follow him. So the goal, the initial goal of walking with someone is introduction to Jesus. Do you know him? Do you love him? Do you have a prayer life? Have you spent time with him? Do you have mm-hmm. uh, like it, it's uh, and so I think we we need to remove ourselves a little bit um and even ask the question, okay, how does the church walk with people who identify as LGBT? And there's there's a, a I don't know where this started. I I've seen it somewhere. Um but there was a a, a way to explain this is that you know Sometimes we can go about evangelization and we say, first you have to behave, then you believe, and then you belong. And so behavioral modification, correct Mm -hmm. behavioral modification and correct belief precedes belonging. But is that actually Jesus's model, right? That Jesus's model was more, first you belong. I'm going to sit with you. I'm going to eat with you. I'm going to dine with you. You can even follow me. You watch what I'm doing. Like, I'm going to be in relationship with you and friendship with you. I'm going to call you friend, right? So first you belong. Then as you're walking with him and they, he, they, the, the people see what he's doing and they come to believe in him. So have relationship, have friendship. And if the church can have a sense of, of better belonging, inviting people in, then let them be blown away by who we are as church, the people of God, let them be so. And if I guarantee if they see healings and signs and wonders, and maybe the church has to repent that we've closed our own doors to enough faithfulness to allow the, 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 supernatural ministry of Jesus to give evidence to people's beliefs. So the first you belong, then you believe that Jesus is Lord. And then you also start to believe that what this man says and what his Mm -hmm. body says must be true. And then there will be behavioral modification. And so Mm -hmm. I, once again, I don't have the answer to this question perfectly, but I do think we have to, as a church, grapple with the fact 
of asking the question, how do we help people who identify with the, uh, with, as LGBT to belong better at church mm-hmm. before they get to a place of full belief in our the teachings mm-hmm. and then behavioral modification. Because if we don't get the belonging piece to get, I don't think we'll, we'll I don't think we're going to be able to ever succeed in the behavioral modification piece. And so yeah. mm-hmm. I think the, the belonging question is critical. I, I actually appreciate that there are bishops and priests and popes trying to grapple with this question and I think, as you said, we have to make not make it a red versus blue question. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. can't become a fight. It has to actually be that we are in a rough situation. We are mm-hmm. we. This is not easy, and so let's actually try things and see what works best. And and let's actually give people mercy if they try things and we disagree with the way they're trying it. But I think make love your aim. Make mm-hmm. the person a person and. Uh, uh, and and grapple with us. Yeah. Keep keep dialogue. Love your I love your answer, Dan. And as I was thinking through even my response and Brad's response, I think that the tendency can be in the answer to a question like this to shy away from the fact that truth actually brings freedom. Mm-hmm. Right? You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And we we can't. The Lord is not going to bring someone to a to a. Uh, a truer understanding of their identity devoid of truth. So I, I think that we need to fight the tendency of, of avoiding hard conversations or avoiding mm-hmm. um, being honest with people. But I, I think we, we do need to do that in its proper order. And, you know who I think... And I love, I love your model for that, that, that invitation to Jesus. Like, let, let mm-hmm. Jesus be the one to convict. Mm-hmm. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to convict. Uh, I think the, the people who are going to get this way better than us is mm-hmm. our current youth. Um, and, and I was talking to my daughter the other day and she's a ballerina, right? And so, uh, and it's, uh, she's in a professional baller, like ballet company. And yeah. there, it, it is very clear that uh, there are like some of the, 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 the people who are in the active LGBT lifestyle who she's dancing with, who are older than her. And I asked her like, how do you deal with that with your beliefs? And, um, and it, her answer just was very simple. She's like, well, I just, I love them. And they know what I stand for. They know who I am. I talk about my faith, but uh, I also like I, I'm just in their life. And yeah. I think because I think because they're growing up in it, mm-hmm. and yet they have remained faithful to the Lord, and they're wrestling with these questions as youth. I think they're going to actually have a better upper hand. Um, there's something about us and, and, and people older than us that it's a um, it was so taboo in our childhood. And so we didn't talk about it. We didn't think it, we just ignored it. And now we're trying to solve the, 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 this question. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think they're actually going to have better pastoral solutions as, yeah. as they get older. Yeah. Well, cause I think I completely agree because when you're in relationship, you, I, I'm going back to what I was saying earlier, but you, you find the avenues where you can challenge and maintain the relationship. Like, like all of us at this table, like in anyone watching, like or listening the the question has to be like when was the last time that you let someone challenge you who you didn't think celebrated you or or you didn't think knew you mm-hmm. the answer is probably never you know like we just don't do that you close off to that challenge but when someone knows you and and honestly if you're in deep relationship you realize the person knows you in a lot of ways better than you know you then all of a sudden it's like oh i I want to give credence to your challenge. And also like on the credence front though, I also want to give credence to the people that that do focus on behavior because like I don't think you're so far off from the ones that talk about signs and wonders like like the testimony of a life where a person's behavior changed, that's a sign that God exists. Like we we can mm-hmm. like we can champion that but also at the same time not force it. Like that's the fruit at the end of the line. It's not always the root. Mm -hmm. And so when you go down to the root and say, right now, I'm going to bring about the fruit that's at the end. It's like, no, till the soil, plant the seed, water it, let it grow up. But the fruit is celebratory and we should get excited about it. Like people moving out of sin tendencies into the fullness of life. Like, I just want to build the steel man on that side. Like you should be excited about that prospect. 
and at the same time, be humble enough to know that your words in a moment with someone you don't have a relationship with are probably going to do the opposite of that which you're getting excited about. You know, it's probably going to move them farther from that fruit, not closer to yep, yep. You know what I mean? Um, because again, if, if you're listening and you're like, yeah, but the behavior has to matter. Sure. It, it's just don't put the cart before the horse. I think yeah. that's yeah. largely. That's sweet. Um, Great. Well, we're going to move into the uh, part of the episode that we call Mission of the Week, because again, we don't just want to talk about mission. We want to be on it. So um, just a, a mission for anyone listening or watching today that they can take into their week and execute from kind of the things we shared today. I have two, so I'll I'll do one. And Okay. If See you if guys, one of us if you guys don't do the other one, <laughs> I might do another one. Uh, I, 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 love to, I love to do this. Affirm something about somebody who makes you uncomfortable. So hey, that was a really good answer, Aaron. Do you see how I just affirmed him? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Check. <laughs> I looked at the wrong camera too. It doesn't matter. I was like, check. Does Aaron uh, make you uncomfortable? Today? I was. <laughs> yes, I, of course. Specifically around this question, oh, okay. you know, when a, um, and this could be across, across anywhere. Like if, if you're tempted to not engage with somebody because they make you uncomfortable, step in and, and affirm someone, um, make them feel loved. Uh, I was at a wedding and there was a, um, there was a, a practicing LGBT, uh, individual there and it was a Catholic community wedding. And it was very clear that this person was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear that the people who there, that much of the Catholic audience had no idea how to engage with the person. Yep. So I made it a point to go up and to actually like affirm, Hey, like uh, your outfit looks amazing today or like yeah. the way it was just some something really encouraging that they're not hearing from anybody else because they feel yep. like they've been canceled yep yep, yep. no that's, that's awesome good. i love that Me that too. was your first one what's your second one i'm gonna wait until you forget oh, it okay okay good 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 um oh shoot i had one i i have been doing a um mental prayer exercise as of late that um that it, my mission will be for you to do this prayer exercise where you try to imagine yourself evangelizing other people um, without feeling superior to them. So like um, the only person who is, uh, Jesus is Lord and I am not. And so to evangelize from a common ground or to share witness from a common ground and not from a superiority ground, I think that would be really like, can, can I get my heart to a place where I don't think I'm better than you mm -hmm. and I'm coming at you with a, mindset that I'm better than you. And it, it is, it has actually led to such incredible fruitful prayer, um, where that like to humble oneself and to make oneself lowly and, um, and to take it, to take the plank out of your own eye and before you look at the speck in another's. And I, I think, you know, really coming to an understanding of the plank that's in my own eye and really knowing that, whoa, man, this plank is massive. And because of that, like your spec isn't all that bad. And, and to, to humble ourselves in that regard, it, it's a beautiful mental prayer. I want to start on yeah. equal ground, not superior ground, um, in the act of evangelization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. I, um, I'm wrestling between two as well. I think my, my mission of the week is going to be, um, I think similar to yours, Dan, it, it's going to, involve the person. So if this would bless you do this this week, I, I'm just getting the idea that like, I think it could be good for any of us to, in our personal prayer this week, take the opportunity to label the sin tendency that you struggle with the most. And I want you to imagine like the Lord, like ministering to you in that place. Like, how would he go about it? What would he do? Like, like if it's, you know, I, I, uh, perpetually, well, let, let, I'll just be vulnerable. So like a thing for me is I have to watch exaggerating because I, I like exaggerating for the sake of getting more people on board to something. So if I was in my personal prayer and I was writing out exaggeration and I was thinking to myself, if someone just came up to me and said, you exaggerate all the time, I would fight them. So if I would put exaggeration down, but I would look at like, how, how would the Lord come to Brad? exaggerating and walk with him. And I think if you do that, what you're going to begin seeing is Jesus's heart for you, which is then the heart you can carry into the mission in your life. Nice. I love it. Yep. Uh, should, Brad, you are the host. Should we give Aaron a bonus or cut him off? <laughs> um, 
Aaron bonus. Oh, wow. Brad <laughs> has a generous heart like the father. Great. Just real quick, uh, I think a lot of times we hesitate to share truth because we don't find it convicting. There are some sweet programs and ministries that minister specifically to the healing and to the hearts of LGBT individuals in a way that's awesome and incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, take some time and do some research if you don't know them. Yeah, that would be great. Eden Invitation is one that comes to mind, and I'm sure there's a, a plethora of others. But Dan, you want to close us in prayer? Yes, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you, uh, you had the answer to the hardest questions. The, the scribes and the Pharisees, they tried to puzzle you. They tried to stump you. They tried to put you in a corner. And you always answered. You answered with truth. You answered with love. You answered with power. Lord, we pray for a church that is um, able to do the same. We pray that the Father would bless our minds and the Spirit would anoint our words so that we would have answers to the difficult situations people find themselves in in this world today. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to guide and shepherd your church and guide and shepherd those who are outside of your church so that the prayer that you had in the garden that we might all be one would be fulfilled in our lives. Mm -hmm. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining us this week on Beyond Damascus. If you have any thoughts about what we shared today, please drop those in the comments. Like it if you liked it and continue the conversation if you want to do that. Feel free to send this to a friend if you think it would bless them or if you have uh, different people that you're serving alongside that you think this would be a really good topic to address. Feel free to throw it over to them as well so you guys can discuss and keep the conversation moving. And we want to remind you, as always, here at Beyond Damascus, that mission Mission makes makes sense. sense. we throw sense into a jar. Get it? No, is that why we do that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping eye contact on the Yeah. I think the right I think it's the right camera. Have a great week, friends.